chapter one of the good governance uh, will tackle about the social responsibility framework. Uh, in this chapter, we will be uh, we will uh, give you some ideas and an overview of the social responsibility that will provide a general framework for studying the field of business and society. The chapter will also uh, consider the development of the social responsibility. Uh, its benefit to organization even and the changing nature of the expectations in our increasing global economy so the contribution of it and also we will introduce the framework for studying the social responsibility concept uh, used in this uh, text and it will include a lot of uh, things like uh, the elements as a street as a strategic uh, management for stakeholders uh, relations then at the same time, uh, the relations, the community relations, and the strategic uh, philanthropy, the technology issues, the sustainability issues, and the global social responsibility context, and its social audit. First of all, we're going to be defining the social responsibility, and we'll consider the relevance of uh, the business types the strategic focus and the stakeholders the chapter will also uh, consider the development of the social responsibility uh, its benefit to organization even and the changing nature of the expectations in our increasing global economy so a contribution of it and also we will introduce the framework for studying the social responsibility concept uh, used in this uh, text. And it will include a lot of uh, things like uh, the elements as a, street, as a strategic uh, management for stakeholders uh, relations. And then at the same time, uh, the relations, the community relations and the strategic uh, philanthropy, the technology issues, the sustainability issues and the global social responsibility context and its social audit. The uh, definition of the social responsibility will delve uh, in the definition of the uh, extent to which a business adopts a strategic focus for fulfilling uh, the economic, the legal, the ethical, and the philanthropic responsibilities that is expected uh, from its uh, stakeholders. Uh, uh, for, uh, there now, and, and in most societies, uh, business are granted a license, a license to operate, and the right to exist through a combination of social and legal mechanisms. So, what are these? So, uh, you're talking about letter A. Businesses are expected to pay their taxes, and then abide by laws and regulations, treating their employees fairly. Uh, follow uh, through on contracts and meet many other standards that are related to running a right use and justifiable business operations. The another one is businesses today are expected to look beyond self-interest and then recognize that they belong to a larger group. Uh, and this group uh, expects responsible, uh, responsibility in their uh, participation orientation. Society uh, responsibility adopts a strategic focus and these are the responsibility that involves action, measurement, and results. And then number two is that responsibility requires a formal commitment or way of communicating the company's social responsibility philosophy. And then in order uh, for any initiative uh, to have a formal commitment or way of communicating the company's social responsibility uh, responsibility even in its philosophy included. Now in order for any initiative to, uh, to have the strategic, uh, strategic importance and process, it must be um, fully valued and uh, championed by top management. And then the social responsibility will depend on collaboration and coordination across many parts of uh, the businesses and among its constituencies, no? so altogether 
combining all those resources. Now, large companies is committed to social responsibility and this often create employment uh, positions or departments uh, to spearhead the various components of its social responsibility programs. Okay, now the social responsibility fulfills the society's expectation. How? Uh, the types of responsibilities can be illustrated as a pyramid with four levels. So what are these four levels of uh, the pyramid? Economic, uh, legal, ethical, and philanthropic. If I may repeat, it's economic, legal, ethical, and philanthropic. Now, the economic responsibility that we are referring here is about the businesses. They have a responsibility to be economically viable. Viable in order to provide a return on investments for their owners no, and stakeholders. And then thus creating jobs for the community as a whole and contribute goods and services to the company or to the economy. To articulate the legal responsibility, uh, companies are required to obey laws and regulations and then pass to promote a responsible business conduct of the the ethical uh, responsibility is referring to that companies must decide what they consider to be just, to be fair, and to be right. Now, the realm of business ethics are, in, uh, are, are the composition of those uh, fairness, uh, the righteousness even. Now, businesses et uh, business ethics refers to the principles and standards that guide behavior in the world of business and or in any organizations so that is the ethical responsibility now we go to the philanthropic responsibility so companies can promote uh, human welfare and goodwill by making a voluntary donation of money even time and other resources that uh, that person is willing to shell out and you know provide uh, as part of his philanthropic deeds now, there is not necessarily a natural progression from uh, economic to philanthropic responsibilities, but uh, rather all four levels uh, are related to each other and integrated into the social responsibility approach. Now, this is especially complex uh, for uh, firms that operate in home and host markets. Okay, now we go to the social responsibility that requires a stakeholder's orientation first we define what is a stakeholder so a stakeholder include uh, those who of whom an organization is, is responsible and that includes uh, the customers the employees the investors and the shareholders the suppliers the government the communities and many others that are uh, 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 relatedly affected by the operations of the business now, this orientation uh, suggests that the business is fundamentally connected to other parts of society and must take responsibility for its effects. And even uh, organizations uh, take a strategic compliance minimal or uh, force responsibility perspective with each stakeholder. Now, the development of U.S. responsibility in the United States. So we compare uh, what is happening in the United States because that is what we are referencing for. Now, many large U.S. firms uh, grew to dominate the global economy. And that happens after World War II. And the United States was perceived as setting a uh, global standard for other nations to emulate. Because remember that during the after the World War II, uh, many countries, the first world that we know of today, were devastated heavily. And it was only the United States that are not actually being uh, largely affected, uh, you know, the home countries, no? the, the whole of the states, because uh, the proxy war happens outside the peninsula or the continent of, the, of North and South America. So it happens somewhere in, you know, Europe, Asia parts, I mean, you know, China and all of those uh, parts of the globe. Now, um, okay. Now, the definitive external characteristic of these firms was the economic dominance of uh, the United States we're referring to here. Now, internally, they were marked by the unlimited uh, 
autonomy that is afforded, afforded by their managers. Now, internally also, uh, uh, even with their largely unchecked power, uh, managers contributed to the communities, even in charities, through arts uh, and culture during the 1950s and the 1960s. And uh, yeah, remember uh, the war ended in 1945, and then so uh, the world was healing uh, after that. No, so in the 1950s and 1960s, the U.S. are the ones uh, you know initiating these orders. Uh, in this uh, in this uh, uh, decade, the 50s and the 60s, corporations develop better products, and then the greater choices uh, are now being uh, you know uh, introduced in the market. And then good employee salaries were also uh, yeah, improved, and other benefits were uh, systematized and introduced in those uh, times. Now, after all of these things happened and stabilized, uh, economic turmoil during the 1970s and the 1980s almost eradicated the corporations. Okay. Uh, uh, how? Why? Because venerable firms that had dominated the economy in the 1950s and the 1960s became extinct or ineffective and their previous stability were dissolved uh, consequently, you know, eventually. And then companies tried to uh, protect themselves from business cycles by becoming more focused on the core competencies and reducing their product diversity. So that's one way to divert it and to sustain it. And then companies elected to adopt a flatter organization. Organizational hierarch hierarchies that would, uh, you know, somehow lessen the red tapes and resulted in workforce reduction even and increased empowerment of the lower level employees. Okay? So that is the uh, what flat organization can offer and give, uh, yeah. Uh, and give alternative to. Okay, now what happens in the 1980s and the 1990s after this uh, after the preceding year? Uh, these uh, decades, the 80s and the 90s, brought a new focus on profitability, and the economies of scales were even you know emphasized. Now what happened? The efficiency and productivity became the primary objectives of businesses. And top managers lost uh, some of their power as stockholders and consumers grew more demanding. Now, when that happens, the benefits of the corporations of the old were large, largely forgotten uh, in the 1980s. But concern for corporate responsibilities was even renewed on in the 1990s. Now, what happened? In the 1990s, many companies decided to pursue and expect more responsible and respectable business practices. Uh, and consequently, consumers and employees began to take a more holistic approach to life and work. Now, the sheer number of corporate scandals in 2001 and 2002 prompted a new era of social responsibility that is happening. Now, near the end of the first day, decade of the 21st century, uh, the global economy slowed in the wake of numerous financial scandals and the widespread corporate losses and tested the new era of social responsibility. Okay, so uh, that, what happens in the uh, 2008 and uh, 2009 and, that, that, uh, and some of the lessons learned from the economic debacle of the 2008 and 2009. Now, after that, uh, recent perceptions of business and society represent the confluence of the ideas of two decades in the 1960s and the 1980s. Okay, now from the 60s, we gain a stronger interest in social issues and how all parts of society can help prevent uh, and resolve these issues. And then the economic upheaval, the narcissism of the 1980s, attuned many people to the influence that companies uh, that companies uh, have on society at the time when the desire to make money profound, profoundly dominates 
No? So that's you're talking about, you know, amassing profit altogether. Now, in what happened in the 1990s and beyond, the balance between the global market economy uh, and uh, the interest in social justice and the cohesion uh, best characterized the intent and the need for social responsibility. So there, no, it come, uh, you know, that's the, the, the essence of how uh, uh, the social responsibility came about the uh, consciousness of huge corporations. Okay, now next is the global nature of social responsibility. So how did it happen? So the increasing globalization of business has made social responsibility an international concern and participation. Okay, there is a significant a significance of criticism of the increasing power and the scope of business, particularly with regard to multinational companies. And in these companies around the world, uh, there is a recognition of a relationship between strategic responsibility and business performance altogether. Now, social responsibility is applicable to businesses around the world uh, through all the adaptations of implementa implementation and other details are required on a local level even. So start from there, local before going international. And that's it. No? And then eventually benefiting you know, all of these stakeholders and participants in this cycle. Now, what is the benefits of having uh, to practice the social responsibility? Okay, so ample research and uh, anecdotal evidence uh, demonstrate that there are many rewards for companies who uh, uh, implement social responsibility programs in their policies uh, in, in running their organization. Uh, number uh, and then trust is the glue that can hold organizations together and allows them to focus on efficiency, productivity, and eventually gaining a lot of profit for the company. So that's important: efficiency, productivity, and uh, profits. Now, by focusing on customer satisfaction, a business can strengthen its customers' trust in the company and when that happens it will increase the firm's understanding of customers requirements now social responsibility is also associated with trust-based systems uh, that enhance a nation's economy and the markets even and even the social responsibility is positively associated with profit in the form of return on investment return on asset and sales growth and an organization's demonstration of goodwill and respect of employees usually results in trust and commitment or else it will struggle with developing investors uh, loyalty okay now there are there is a framework now so a framework for studying social responsibility uh, it will depict how the chapter of this book will illustrate the social responsibility framework in some of the context of uh, what we are going to be discussing uh, later. Now, the framework will begin with the look of an importance of working with stakeholders. Uh, what is the relevance no? uh, to achieve the social responsibility objectives? So it is important that stakeholders must be you know, uh, part of the loop and participation. Now the framework also will uh, include an examination of uh, the influence of the co corporate governance, uh, its legal and regulatory policies, the political environment that uh, you know it uh, holds true, and then the business ethics and business decisions and actions uh, that stakeholders and all of the uh, you know the, the managers and decision makers should adopt. And the issues that confront business decisions uh, will have that influence uh, in their decision making at the present time. Now, these responsibilities and issues will include the uh, employee relations, consumer relations, the community and the strategic philanthropy, the, the technology, the sustainability of the business, and the global responsibility and the audit of the social 
responsibility you need. Okay, so that is the essence of what uh, 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 chapter one will tell us. Now, in this uh, chapter, uh, actually, as uh, in chapter one, uh, the social responsibility framework has given us uh, an idea on how it evolved uh, from the uh, uh, from the early times. Now, but that the consciousness of the the corporations began the social responsibility um, acceptance and part of the operations came about during uh, the latter part of the century okay so that is the social responsibility framework as part of our chapter one discussion thank you and uh, see you again in our next chapter uh, discussions